Hey guys, Mike here. So I hope everybody's doing well today and we're gonna talk about a couple things today. One, I'm gonna show you basically a pattern you're starting to see on these charts, right? Especially the, the big mega caps, even some of the indexes. And we'll, we'll talk about that because you need to be fully aware of this just in case there is a move uh, that happens here over the next like week or two. Uh, but also, you know, I get questions all the time. It's one of the things that people go, man, no, no matter what economic news comes out, because none of us ever really good, right? That the market just keeps turning higher and higher. And I'm going to show you that. Okay, I'll, I'll show you what's going on. And until that stops, you know, you won't see any major, major moves down. Right? I don't mean it can't be a small pullback, three, four, five percent, whatever. But you know, the, the major ones, you need these three things to stop before that happens. Okay, and I, and we'll go over the charts and everything, especially when it comes to a, a certain area in this world that that tends to make up you know the second largest economy in the world, right? And we talked about it last week, and I said, wait to pull the trigger on this until you get this news about this country, okay? And, of course, we finally got the news, and it wasn't what people were expecting, right? Shocker there. Now, one thing, of course, that continues to hold things up and is a good thing, and I'm one of these people, and I'm sure most of you are too, right? More than 9 in 10 mortgage holders hold a rate in less than 60%, but I ain't even worried about that. If you go down to those covers at the bottom and start at the bottom, those two covers at the bottom, I'm color blinds, I don't know what color those are. I'm going to say orange and gray or something, right? But it shows that at least about around between 50 and 60% of us have a mortgage less than 4%. Almost 25% of people have mortgages less than 2%. Okay. And so that that's something, I don't know if you've ever had that before, but that is massive, right? And of course, what does that also mean? That means people aren't going to sell their homes. Now, one of the shocking but also good news that came out about the home industry is Housing starts jumped 21% in May, the largest month-over-month -month increase since 2016, and 6% year-over-year, as you can see by this chart right here, which is good because what do we need? We need inventory, right? Especially when people, I mean, I know I don't plan on selling my house because I don't want to go into a mortgage that's like 6 7% versus what I got now. It doesn't make any sense, right? And so let me know if you plan on selling your house. But, you know, that, that's a good thing. We need the inventory. Hopefully they'll keep building. And, of course, what's that done? The home builder stocks, as I on, touched on last week or the week before, they've gone up. So what has the U.S. home construction ETF done? It's gone up massive. Since October, it's up 63%, and it's getting ready to set an all-time new high. It's 82 now. All-time new high be 83.10, somewhere in there. And so most likely that'll be set this week, right? If it keeps going up. And so, and also uh, when I show the members, I think it was the members I show these charts to, but these home builders are sitting there, setting all time new highs, are getting ready to set all time new highs, you know? And so, uh, that, but that's good news, right? For the home industry, we need that. And so all, now the three things that you have to see change if you're looking for some major pullback guys, one, short sellers got to go away, right? I mean, so far they lost 120 billion, but at the bottom you see this cumulative short positions reached one trillion dollars in June as concerns about reduced market breadth take hold, right? Which actually the market breadth has been expanding recently, but we'll see where that goes. The other thing is liquidity. This right here is something I give members every day. This makes up the treasury account, the Fed balance sheet, and the reverse repo. Right, and we said, "Oh man, in June it's going to fall off a cliff because they're going to be selling all these bonds, and it's none, done nothing but just keep going up." Right, and what's the market done with it? Keeps going up. Remember, liquidity is the number one driver of a market, especially coming out of a bear market or going into a rally. Number one. Okay, and so keep that in mind. The other thing you have to see stop, and you saw this again today. I don't know what the certain percentage is because I'm not going to waste my time going to look, but I'll guarantee you it's over 75 percent, if not more. Every day we start off red, right? We start plowing down and say, oh man, we're going to go down big time. What happens? V-shaped recovery. You get a V-shaped recovery and then either trade sideways to the end of the day or something. But you get these V-shaped recoveries on the SPY uh, and the Qs. The IWM, not so much, but it somewhat does that. But especially anything to do with tech, right? And guys, before we continue, if you're getting anything out of this, please hit that thumbs up down there. I really appreciate it. And if you like the material here and the videos, think about subscribing. And what does that mean? That means you have dip buyers coming in, right? And that level, which I don't think I showed on there, that was just a certain level. Usually these indexes hit and boom, here we go. Taking off to the moon, right? Or at least recovering, almost fully recovering. It almost fully recovered today. Uh, and then it started to trade down and stuff. So, you know, that right there, if you're in the bear camp, you want to see a major pullback, name in the bear camp. If you don't want to see a major pullback, there's certain stocks you want to get into or something or add to your position that you're already in, right? then obviously that the dip buyers got to go away 
right? You, you got to stop seeing these V-shaped recoveries, which is normal. We've had it going on now for six months at least. And so, and then you got to see liquidity start dropping, right? Liquidity has got to drop first, actually, uh, before the market drops, uh, even uh, what I track. And then, of course, as like a gentleman kept saying about short sellers, you got you got to get them, you got to get enough bears just squeezed out, right? And that way you, you'll, you'll be able to drop a lot faster because what, what's happening now is what? As you can see, by 120 billion down, shorts keep getting squeezed higher and higher. That's what keeps happening, right? And so, you know, just just keep that in mind. I mean, that, that's a lot of short positions in there. But uh, you know, and the funny thing is, I mean, right now, as I'm gonna show you these charts. It actually is. If you were gonna start shorting, well, I am not. But I mean, I may buy puts or something. But I don't outright short any stocks. I just don't. I don't do that. It's not my thing. Um, but yeah, I do buy puts on certain things. Or maybe I'll buy an inverse ETF or something like that. But when you see these charts, you kind of go, oh, it makes sense. I mean, they're they're in good position to do it. So I don't actually blame people or institutions for doing it now, especially. Um, but there's just still so much momentum in these big mega cap stocks, right? And speaking of breath, what was supposed to happen with small caps, right? They're supposed to be just breaking out. Here we go, taking off and all this good stuff, breaking above this. And what's the magic number? 189. You don't have to get in front of a train, guys. Until it closes above 189. All this is for nothing. That, that's just the way it is. It's not a magic number. You can just see. I mean, you tag 189, bam. And we sold all since. So we'll see if it can finally move up or not. Uh, currently, though, when we go back, and you, I mean, if you look at the daily, you can see that MACD right there. If it does get a bearish cross, like a true bearish cross, you can see the last three times this has happened. And when you get a bearish cross like that, the IWM tends to sell down uh, pretty significantly, actually. We'll see if that's the case now, of course but that that's usually what happens and i mean maybe we'll get saved at that support line right there at three percent down but it could go as far down as seven we'll have to see you know just watch for that bearish macd cross rsi breaking below the 50 if that happens and, and of course what's not happening on the russell day is the regional banks i always tell you when you see all the regional banks red like this rarely you're going to see the russell or, or even iwc uh, which are micro caps you know going green right and so it just has a lot of these banks on there and so just keep that in mind. Now, this is something you're going to see a lot, right? These channels. A lot of stocks are in these channels. The queues are in these channels. And they're at the top of the channels, a lot of them. So you can see as soon as they hit the top of that channel, it's sold off. Uh, you know, small, but not, not nothing major right there, as you can see. But again, if we end up finally getting a bearish MACD cross, it is oversold on the RSI. I think the trend line right there at the bottom of the channel is your target, and it's only 6%. I mean, that, that's literally nothing. I mean, we've seen the queues go up that in two or three days, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, just keep that in mind. Again, the stocks will be down more, so if you're looking to go into a position, for me personally, I'd rather go into a position right there than actually, or add to a position right there than at the top of a channel. But again, you know, we'll see how that goes. Just want to keep you in mind on this. And of course, this cues the charts of the channels right what do you got the netflix at it's sitting at the top of a channel right it's sitting overbought all right usually these two in combo means there's going to be a pullback whether it's a small pullback or a good size pullback we'll have to see you meta see the same thing it's sitting at the top of a channel started rejecting off of it a little bit there overbought and so in the macd down there, it looks like it's just surfing across so it doesn't even matter but it's trying to fill this gap it was only like three percent away from filling the whole gap which to me would make a much better position uh for a rejection at the top of the channel and start selling off after that because that would mean basically it filled that enormous gap and usually you do get a sell off when you get that big of a gap fill and it's got those gaps down below but you know again what's a good target the bottom of the channel right and so if that happens you know here's another one microsoft actually reached the top of this channel just the other day sold all the way down to the bottom so we actually might be looking for a bounce and this is one of those stocks we're gonna look at next three actually who have no resistance up above. Like once they start setting, because they've set all time new highs, right? So once they get above like 349, I think that is right there, you know, there's just no resistance because we're setting all time new highs. Okay. Apple, again, nothing but air up there. Okay. And it's at the, almost at the top of the channel right here. Uh, so what's keeping a look at that right there. But again, if you wonder why these keep setting new high for new high, there's just no resistance and big money still buying, right? Because I don't see a whole lot of retail investors buying up here at, at these levels. But, you know, the quant funds, the hedge funds, they're chasing it right now, right? And last but not least is NVIDIA. And the last stock we'll talk about, which has nothing but clear skies ahead of it. And what does it tell you when it keeps setting all time new highs? That big money keeps piling in, okay, at 435 a share. Still chasing it, right? Still pushing it up. Uh, still willing to give it, you know, Hey, 30, 40 times sales don't matter. It's going to happen again. This can just keep going. 
because uh, we know it's overbought on the daily, the weekly, the monthly. I've showed you though it can stay overbought for freaking weeks on end. And again, we'll see what happens when earnings rolls around. We're right on this one, but I will say your test on this one's simple. If people in the elevators and your family and friends are asking you about NVIDIA or C3 AI or any of the AI stock, that's when you know we've hit basically euphoria and something bad might be fixing to happen. So let me know in the comments if that's already happening. But that's usually how it works when you got people that aren't even in the game talking about stuff like this and trying to pile in as well. So uh, let us know in the comments if that's happening, all right? And of course, what stocks aren't you know, being chased right now, and this is what I was saying, you know, might want to wait on this one is the Chinese stocks, right? All of them are red. And this is what we talked about last week when I said, I think it was Thursday, Friday's video, whatever it was I put out, saying China was going to be coming out and seeing if they were going to do stimulus, right? Well, of course, that ended up disappointing because uh, as you can see right here, Chinese banks followed the central bank by lowering their benchmark lending rates on Tuesday. Although it was a modest reduction, it still disappointed the investors, right? The one and five year loan prime rate was reduced by 10 basis points each, according to a statement by People's Bank of China. But of course, when this news came out, Chinese stocks in the Hong Kong underperformed the broader regional market. The Hang Seng China Enterprise Index was down almost 2% midday. And one reason for this is you got to understand, remember, most of their money is tied up in the housing market in China. And just look at what's going on with these asking prices for these homes. I mean, if this is a stock chart, this ain't going to be one you want to be going along in right now, right? I mean, this is the asking prices. And you can see 2023 still falling off a cliff. 2022 fell off a cliff. 2021 fell off a cliff. So instead of going up, it's going down. And everything, you know, relies on their housing market. When it goes down, you know, as their housing market goes, so to speak, so does China. And so it really surprised people when they didn't try to do more. Don't mean they can't come out and do more. And one thing you're seeing right now is this came out Sunday China's big city homeowners cash out. Like they're really pushing to start selling, right? And they already got an inventory problem. It's the opposite of ours. They got plenty of inventory. And now they're about to have a lot more inventory, right? Because selling pressure is piling up. People are getting nervous about these prices dropping. And so they're trying to get out while the getting's good, right? And when that happens, all of a sudden they can start a stampede over in that market right there. So you got to keep that in mind. Their citizens don't spend like drunken sailors and run credit cards up and like crazy mess like we do. They actually save and everything, and a lot of their money's tied up in these houses, right? And so, again, this is the second largest economy, and that's why that, this is important. They buy iPhones and Teslas and all that good stuff, right? So, if their consumers aren't doing good, which we're going to find out in the second, third quarter, then, you know, uh, a lot of these stocks aren't, aren't going to be doing very good. They do a lot of business with China. Now, Tesla had a huge day today. Again, broke above that supply zone. Uh, closed above the 264, 265 area, which is key. Again, it's been overbought for a long time. Uh, the MACDs continues to stay stretched, but all it's doing for over a month now is walking up this trend line. It'll pull back to it, bounce, pull back to it, bounce. So if we get a pullback, just look for a bounce right off that right now. And if we go to the weekly, uh, you can see right now uh, that puts, with this close today, between 290 and 300 in sight, right? Because that's really your next uh, supply areas, your next resistance and everything. And if you keep getting that call by like you've been getting, it's going to keep pushing. Now, of course, had a good news today with another EV maker joining its supercharger station, and that's going to be Rivion. All right, so they're going to join as well. So what is that, three or four over the last month? And the one thing I didn't really get, I saw this come out this weekend out of Florida. Governor DeSantos signs a bill to ban direct-to-consumer car sales starting July 1st. And, of course, who's the biggest direct-to-consumer car salesman? It's Tesla, right? But this is where, you know, Elon pulled his checkbook out. He understands how the game works. We legally bribe these people, right? So what happened? Lobbyists and lawmakers were able to work out a deal, i.e. the numbers on the check got big enough. So they'll allow electric vehicle companies like Tesla, Rivian, and Lucid to hold a franchise dealer license for direct sales of EVs if they are not otherwise prohibited under federal law. So it will not affect them. I really don't understand the point in the bill uh, once that came to fruition. But, hey, you know, that's what, that's what money does in this country, right? So earnings to watch out for tomorrow. KB Homes is the one to watch out for. Again, it's either set an all-time new high or fixing to. And we'll see what they say about inventory and things like that and demand. And then Thursday, look out for Darden Restaurants because they're one of the biggest ones out there. And I want to really listen to to see if they're able to ra still raising prices, plan on raising prices, and what the demand is looking like. And then CarMax on Friday just to see how the demand is looking and what they're doing on prices. Economic news, you know, all you're seeing is Fed speakers galore coming out. I don't know what else they can say to affect the market. You'll have uh, continuous jobs claims on the 22nd. 
initial jobless claims. We'll see if uh, the job market is still softening or is just kind of staying hot. That's what we got to figure out. You have Jerome Powell speaking on Wednesday and Thursday. Again, I don't know what else this man can say that he hadn't already said. And then you have manufacturing data coming out on Friday, and the market does not care about this because it's only 30% of the economy at this point in time and it's terrible so no surprise there and so i'll tell you what the next two to four weeks is going to be very interesting because when you think about it you know you have no fed meeting the fed presidents are talking but come on like you know they're falling on deaf ears what they got to say right and you know you have no earnings and so i'm trying to think of what like really a news event could come out and unless it's something out of another country i don't i don't know let me know in the comments if you can think of anything uh that would happen and stuff and so, I mean, the only thing that could push the market down here or even try to stall it out is some kind of gamma squeeze down from everybody start buying puts or something. I mean, I don't know if that would have happened, but, you know, I just, I don't know. It's going to be hard to see because as long as big money is chasing the Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, right, even AMD a little bit, but most of those three, uh, it's going to be, I don't know, interesting to see how, how it stops and keep going higher and higher. And so, and that's why a lot of people are calling for 4500 uh, on the spine stuff by you know in july maybe we'll have to see but that of course is when the fed meeting comes up but you know i can't think of anything else and, and of course stuff happens i mean you just never know but uh again with everything being right at the top of these channels overbought that's usually and then fear and greed index is extreme greed usually get some kind of pullback or whatever but and i think a lot of people are just looking to for a better entry than trying to buy uh, up here at all time highs and stuff like that so anyway let me know what you're doing guys if you got anything out of it please hit that like subscribe button really appreciate all you guys that watch the videos sign up for the membership and everything uh you're the best and uh so i'll get a bunch of new data tomorrow coming out i know i'll uh, put a video for you guys and we'll go from there so have a good one guys thanks a lot